CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight we are going to be making another comfort casserole and it's going to be tamale pie. And this one is a vintage one. So come along with me and let's get started. So tamale pie has its origins in the early 1900s and it's usually considered a Tex-Mex kind of thing. Um, it's generally considered to have started in Texas sometime around 1910. And tamale pie is usually formed with a beef chili type base, although it can be made with chicken or pork or other things, but it generally has chili type components and then it has a cornmeal or masa crust. And part of the reason that they started using this and why it became popular through World War I and II is that it can serve on wheat because it was made with a cornmeal product. And it was also one of the, of the first dishes that was taught in home economics classes in the early 1900s. And it's probably in the home ec classes that my mother took that she learned this dish and it was a very favorite popular dish in our house when we were growing up and she wasn't born in the early 1900s, let me know. <laughs> but it continued into the 70s and 80s and is very popular still to this day. It's very easy and it's going to use a lot of the things that we already have around the house and it's also going to introduce us to some new things and some new options on the keto lifestyle. So come along and let's get started. So the base of our tamale pie is going to be a chili and I'm going to be using mostly the chili recipe that we already have up on our blog. That's cjsketokitchen.com in case you want that recipe. I'm going to be putting a little less liquid in this recipe this time just because um, we're going to be, you know, condensing it a bit for our tamale pie. So I have browned in the pan two pounds of ground beef and I have about a quarter of a chopped onion in there and that's already been browned and now we're going to add a few ingredients to make the base of our chili. I'm putting in two small cans of tomato sauce and this is about half of what it is in our usual recipe just because like I said our chili is going to be thicker to make the base of our tamale pie. So I'm just going to stir that around. Also want a little bit of tomato paste, just about a tablespoon. And tomato paste is just really thickened and condensed tomato. And I'm just going to kind of work that around and it will blend itself as we add some more liquids. I want a couple of shakes of, of Worcestershire sauce. I also want a couple of squirts of no sugar added ketchup. It's going to add just a tiny bit of sweetness to our chili. I'm going to add one can of Rotel. And Rotel is just tomatoes with some green chilies in it. Most stores have a store brand, but Rotel, the brand name is less than a dollar a can and we just want one can. And I'm gonna leave the liquid in there. I'm just gonna stir that around. Now I'm going to add our seasoning components. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is just pink Himalayan salt. I'm just gonna salt it a little bit. I'm not gonna use the whole spoonful. I'm also going to add some cumin. Just a few shakes. That's going to give us our, mine's not coming out. That's just going to give us our Tex-Mex flavor to our chili. I'm going to add just a little bit of celery seed and that just gives it that little bit of mirepoix taste like if we had actually chopped up celery in there, but this just saves a step and I just a tiny sprinkle of that. Then I'm going to add some chili powder. It's just regular light chili powder. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over. I want it nicely strong, strongly chili flavored. 
So I'm going to incorporate all of that. And then I'm just going to add just a bit of water, just to give us a little bit of sauciness to our chili. We are keeping it a little thicker than we would be if we were making an actual chili out of because it is a casserole. So I'm only going to add about eight ounces of water. Actually, less than that. I only did about, I'd say, six ounces of water. And I'm just going to give it a nice stir. And I'm going to put the lid on it. And I'm going to let it simmer for 30 minutes. I'm going to turn the heat up at first and let it get to where it's almost a rolling boil and then I'm going to turn it down and we're going to simmer for 30 minutes. So we've let our chili simmer for almost 30 minutes now. I am going to add a can of black soybeans and I have drained and rinsed them. If you don't want beans in your chili, you absolutely can skip this a step. I happen to like the authenticity of it, but it's completely up to you. We only eat soybeans a couple of times a year. So I'm just going to let that hang out for a few more minutes while we prepare the rest of our tamale pie. So you are going to need a casserole dish of I'm not exactly sure what circumference mine is. Mine's a Pioneer Woman one. But I would say it is less than a 9 by 13. I would think it's more like a probably 7 by 10. But it's an oval dish. And I'm going to grease mine with a little bit of avocado oil spray. Just as a protective measure. So now we are going to assemble our cornbread topping for our tamale pie. And I'm going to be doing that in my blender. Now this recipe originally came from Keto Connect and I have kind of hybridized it to make it a topping for our tamale pie. So in my blender I'm going to start out with the liquids. And so for that I need three eggs. also need about a quarter of a cup of sour cream, so not an awful lot. I'm also going to put just a little bit of squeezy sweetener in there, just a tiny bit. If you don't like your cornbread a little sweet, then you could totally omit this step, but I like it just a little sweet, so I just did two squirts in there. I also need a half a cup of melted butter. I'm just going to give that a quick whirl. So our next ingredient, before we add our dry ingredients, is baby corn. And before the keto police come knocking on my door. Hello, Sarah from CJ's Keto Kitchen. I'm serving you a warrant because you used corn and corn is not keto. I understand. This is baby corn. And baby corn is slightly different than regular corn in that it has much fewer carbs. It has about three carbs and two of those are fiber. So you actually only have one carb for half of this can. So we can use the whole can for only two carbs. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to dump it into our liquids and we're going to whirl it up. Here's what the baby corn looks like. And I'm just going to give that a little bit of a blitz. Now I do believe that in Matt and Mega's recipe, they left their corn slightly whole and just chopped it up. But for my purposes, I want my cornbread to be a smooth topping on top of my tamale pie. So that's why I'm whirling mine up. Okay, now we are ready for our dry ingredients. So we need two cups of almond flour and I'm going to use a smaller measuring cup to put it into my large Pyrex. So that is two cups of almond flour. And then we need a quarter cup of coconut flour. And coconut flour is pretty readily available nowadays. I just found mine at Walmart. 
and this is not going to have a coconut taste at all. Then we also need three teaspoons of baking powder. So baking powder. And I'm gonna put in three teaspoons. some more baking powder. Then I'm going to put the lid back on my blender and blend it again. I'm going to take my spatula and kind of scrape down. And I'm going to do it one more time. see that we have a nice thick cornbread texture. So we are going to assemble our dish. I'm going to once again make sure that everything is well combined in my blender. You can see it's very thick, like spoon bread, which is what we are wanting. So now I'm going to take my prepared chili and put it in the bottom of my casserole dish. I'm just using a spoon. We can see that our chili is very beautiful. And last time I prepared this, I did have some extra chili left over. And I just kind of set that aside in case you want a little extra chili with your tamale pie. And then my daughter, who loves chili, of course, ate some as well. She actually ate two bowls full, not knowing that it was sugar-free and didn't have any actual beans in it, any kidney beans or pinto beans. Okay, so there is our chili in the bottom of our casserole dish, and we've left enough room on the top for our cornbread topping. So I'm just going to start putting this on and I usually start at one end and kind of scoot it down the casserole and that way I'll be able to spread it out fairly well. And you're trying to do it as tidily as you can but no. The stray bean here or there is going to give it that homey look. We have a little bit left in here for the edge. And we're going to bake this at about 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes until our cornbread is nicely set up. Because our chili is already cooked. So we're basically just cooking our cornbread layer. And I'm going to wipe the edge of my casserole just to clean it up a bit. Okay, so we are going to put it in the oven for 45 to 50 minutes at 350 degrees. All right, into our 350 degree oven for 50 minutes. But I would start checking it at 40. Okay, it's ready to come out of the oven. I'm going to let it rest on top of the stove for about 15 minutes and then I will serve it and CJ will have some dinner and let us know what he thinks. CJ, welcome to my fiesta. Hi. We are having tamale pie tonight. Yes, I see. Oh, 
There it is. Of course, I'm going to eat mine with cheese and sour cream, but you want yours all in natural. That's right. I want it natural. I don't want anything uh, to mess it up. Hmm. Let me get a little bit of cornbread with it. That's the star of the show. I know. I have more chili than cornbread. So there you go. Hmm. It's good. I think it's better than the test recipe. Good. So whatever you did this time different was made it good. It was good before though. And the cornbread tastes cornier. <laughs> Just like you, you're cornier. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that. You're the queen of corn. Yeah, I am. And casserole. And cheese. <laughs> good job, babe. I Thank think you. it's good. I think people will like it. Good. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the tamale pie and that you have enjoyed learning some new and creative ways to use baby corn. We hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We upload new content twice a week. Generally, we have our recipes on Sundays, and then we have keto conversations on Wednesdays. Sometimes we have ketogenic food unboxings, and sometimes we have what we eat on keto, travel things, other keto-related content. So be sure and hit the notification bell so that you know when we upload those. If you would like to head on over to our blog, that is cjsketokitchen.com. All of our recipes are there. We also have all the nutritional information. We have previous recipes. We also have little backstories for the recipes that are current and ones that we've done in the past. So we would like to have you join us there as well. We are also on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. And a lot of times we release uh, teaser photos and also photos of what's current in case you missed it um, launching on YouTube. So go ahead and please subscribe to us there because we would like you to be a part of our ketogenic family. You're very important to us. We hope that you'll come back again next time and we'll see you then on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Beatbox for me. Thank you.